Another reason to ban plastic. A new study published in PLOS1 shows that plastic releases greenhouse gases, yet another contributor to climate change. The study found that some of the commonly used plastics release methane and ethylene once they were exposed to sunlight. EcoWatch reports Dr. Sarah Jean Royer, lead author of the study, said they originally set to measure methane produced by organisms in seawater when she realized that most of the methane was being emitted from the plastic bottles in the sea. Dr. Royer and her team tested plastics such as polycarbonate, polypropylene, polystyrene, and low-density polyethylene, along with others found in food packaging, textiles, and other plastic goods. When plastic is exposed to light from the sun, it breaks down, which exposes more plastic area to the sun, resulting in greater gas emissions. One of the plastics, low-density polyethylene, was found to continue emitting gases even in the dark after it had been exposed to the sun. The study found plastic bags, the most commonly used and discarded plastic in the world, emitted the largest amount of greenhouse gases. In a press release by the University of Hawaii, Dr. Royer and her team are now working to constrain the overall greenhouse gas emissions from plastics. Here are more videos related to climate change. Global warming is killing our oceans. A new study predicts that within 15 to 20 years, human-caused deoxygenation will be felt across the world's oceans. With climate change warming sea waters, oxygen levels in the world's oceans are beginning to drop. Surface water with higher temperatures absorb less oxygen. Such surface water is also more buoyant, so oxygen is less likely to make it into deeper water. The resulting conditions are dangerous to marine ecosystems, which depend on oxygen for survival. With the threat already underway, changes in the southern Indian Ocean and parts of the Pacific and Atlantic will be felt as early as 2030. Oceans in eastern Africa, Australia, and Southeast Asia, however, won't feel the impact until the next century. Worsening the effects of deoxygenation is an increase in carbon dioxide, causing oceans to be more acidic and less habitable. Researchers say carbon emissions must be reduced if we want to slow the oxygen loss, but monitoring and understanding where the oxygen levels are dipping and how it's impacting our waters is also key. Another catastrophe caused by climate change. Japan's coral reefs are in danger. According to a government study, rising sea temperatures have impacted the ability of Japan's biggest coral reef to recover from bleaching, resulting in only 1% of the reef being in good health. Due to rising sea temperature, the reef has suffered bleaching events in 1998, 2001, 2007, and 2016, leading to a decrease in the overall coral volume by nearly 80% in the Tsukise Lagoon. A Japanese miniature official said that the loss of rich animal life under the sea would have a grave impact on the ecosystem in the region. The lagoon is approximately 67.89 square kilometers, with only around 1.4% of its corals healthy. According to scientists, it takes at least 10 to 20 years for coral to recover from a bleaching event. Coral reefs are home to 25% of sea life, even though they only make up 1% of marine environment. The only way for the coral to recover is if sea temperatures drop and algae are able to recolonize them again. It might soon be a permanent game over for coral reefs. Warming waters are hurting the world's coral reefs almost five times more than they did 30 years ago. Scientists looked at bleaching data in 100 coral reefs. They found that the frequency of bleaching from warmer waters increased fivefold from once every few decades to once every six years. Bleaching occurs when the reef reacts to stressful changes in temperature, light, nutrients, and other conditions. This makes the reef eject the symbiotic algae in their tissue and turn pale white. Corals can survive and even recover, but continued bleaching eventually leads to death. According to the National Ocean Service, coral reefs are considered sessile animals, meaning they're fixed to one place. The World Wildlife Fund says they provide almost 30 billion U.S. dollars in goods and services every year. They're also important for tourism, coast protection against heavy storms, typhoons, and even tsunamis. Florida's coastline threatened by toxic algae. According to a report from Tampa Bay Times, Florida's coastline is being threatened by toxic algal bloom and it seems to be getting worse every year. CNBC reports an algal bloom is a rapid increase of the population of algae in a relatively short period of time and can take place on freshwater or marine water systems. 
Algal bloom is caused by the overabundance of nutrients, nitrogen, and phosphorus. These nutrients typically come from rainfall and wastewater outflows. The nutrients combined with the temperatures of the sea, sunlight, and water movement can work to trigger an algal bloom. According to the EPA, the toxic blooms hurt marine life by blocking out sunlight, as well as creating toxins that hurt small fish and shellfish after they consume it. Not only do the algae hurt the environment, they also end up creating dead zones in the water where aquatic life can no longer survive because of the lack of oxygen, forcing marine life to either leave the area or die. Tampa Bay Times reports environmentalists are urging the state government to do more to address its polluted water. Snow in the Sahara? Sounds like climate change. The head of Russia's environmental monitoring agency says increasingly frequent snowfalls on one of the hottest places on Earth stems from global warming. On January 7th, a blanket of snow fell on the Sahara Desert, near the northern Algerian town of Ain Sefra. The Sahara has been known to get as hot as 122 degrees Fahrenheit during the day, but while temperatures drop at night, it's unusual to see snow due to the dry air. In 1979, snow fell in the area for 30 minutes. It was 37 years before the next snowfall, but only a year passed between then and the most recent one, which saw 15 inches of snow cover. This along with a cold spell in the U.S., an unusually warm Russian winter, and rainfall and flooding in Western Europe, it's evidence that global warming is on the rise. With the state of the climate as dismal as it is and with no signs of improvement, guess there will be more extreme weather in our future. Yikes. Asia's glaciers are shrinking. With Asian glaciers facing a massive melt by the end of the century, millions of people are at risk of water shortages. And it's all thanks to global warming. The high mountains of Asia lie in a region surrounding the Tibetan Plateau and contains the largest store of permanent ice outside the North and South Poles. Meltwater feeds into major rivers like the Indus, Yangtze, and Mekong and are used for drinking, hydroelectric power, and irrigation. Scientists predict that Asian high mountain glaciers will lose a third of their mass by 2100 if the global temperature rises 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. If temperatures increase 3.5, 4, or 6 degrees, losses could reach 49, 51, and 65 percent respectively. Glacial loss could affect the region's water supply and lead to shortages. At the same time, accelerated melting could trigger intense flooding, especially when combined with climate change-induced heavy rains and super typhoons. High warming scenarios carry worse consequences, including massive sea level rise, floods, droughts, loss of species, and even disease. The only way to avoid such a dismal future is by minimizing global temperature rise. And for that, we need to double, even triple efforts to combat climate change. 